this will be our 83rd lesson in the book of Ephesians and the second to the last installment. Our last lesson will be the next time we meet in next Tuesday. I have in mind to give a uh, synopsis of the book of Philemon next. It's going to give me a little bit of time to prepare. I want to, I don't believe we've gone through Hosea. And there's, uh, there's some very pertinent prophecies in Hosea about both the initial coming and the second coming of Christ. I have in my mind to also review Isaiah, but I'm, I require a little further preparation for that a link, a rather lengthy book. So the next we'll go through Philemon, which is a heart book. I mean, I, this is a <laughs> is a strategy I'm taking here. It's a heart. We're going to see lived out what been taught in Ephesians. That's that's the point. Now in Christ, as you already as you already know. There's a certain family relationship that exists among the members of the household of faith. And it's not confined to local congregation. It acts as a genuine interest that exists in believers about other believers they've never seen. And only about which they've heard. Now this kind of mindset a concern for believers that you haven't seen or maybe you've been away from for a while or that you've only heard about. This kind of mindset cannot be maintained while you while you have an institutional way of thinking. Amen. You probably you probably knew that already, but I mean just to say it kind of sharpens our minds about it. That see this is one of the things that is a curse of a Babylonian religion. It takes away from people a lot of things that is that are normal for for saints, like this care for one another. It's just like it robs them of this, so that all they're concerned about is the is the affairs of this world, how they how the, your brethren are relating to those things. Now in spiritual Babylon, the great whore, as she's called. There's a certain mindset that is fostered by Babylon the Great. <clears throat> First is the a preeminent importance is the maintenance of the institution. Mm -hmm. That is the mm -hmm. yes. that's like fundamental. Right. Yeah. That has taken the place of God. And the other is the adoption of a gospel that contributes to that mindset. So <laughs> if you're going to maintain the institution as the heart of things, then you've got, you can't do that with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, you, so you've got to concoct a gospel, kind of patchwork, take a little from the Bible, a little so forth. You've got to concoct a gospel that adapts to that, lends itself to that kind of mindset. Now in this mindset, there's no real interface between the people. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, there's people that go to churches that have no idea who the other people are. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. And even in small, you know, congregations, 15, 20, 35, 40, most of the people actually don't know each other like brethren are supposed to know each other. Why not? Because this institutional mindset that applies to mega churches and to little bitty churches doesn't allow for that kind of thing. Uh -huh. Because a personal interest in one another destroys this Babylonian see it, it militates against this. You can't build an institution with things like that. Even though they give lip service to caring about one another. That's right. They give a lot of lip service to that. That's right. <laughs> It's all on this earthly, yeah, right. yes. earthly level. It's not care for their faith, or are they maintaining their faith, or are they comforted in the Lord, or are they encouraged? It's not that type of type of thing. They make sure you got plenty of groceries to eat, yeah, and stuff like that. But the other feeding, 
Yeah. The other girl, but the other groceries right. yeah. that are sorely needed. And so as a result, there's no emphasis on mutual edification. Edify one another. See, this is not used. Or comfort one another. Or exhort one another. It doesn't exist. Or praying for various members. For the old saints everywhere. It doesn't exist. Now even though we've been joined to a vast host. Referred to as the general assembly and church of the firstborn. Whose names are written in heaven. That's the, that's the first church that we belong, <laughs> we belong to. The greater part of the church in Babylon the Great has been forgotten. Now you'll notice that Paul does not subscribe to this kind of thinking. In this text, Paul is going to reveal one who labors in the kingdom, and he's going to dispel any misapprehensions about the connection of believers with one another. Elsewhere, he puts specific congregations in mind of other congregations, saints in Macedonia, poor saints in Jerusalem, those of Laodicea. Yeah. He tell them whole congregations now mm -hmm. in another part of, the, of their world. Mm -hmm. He'd make them mindful of them. He'd use them to challenge them. Now the churches of Macedonia, they, mm -hmm. they outgave. They, they outgave. They went above. See, he challenged them with the activities right. of other congregations yeah. that were someplace else. Yeah. Yeah, Babylon, the great's given birth to the I and the my religion. I and the my. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, these, the, the attitude, the present attitude is, has developed a, a competitive Yes, that's right. A real competitive. Oh, yeah. You may say things about Karen Williams. <laughs> Who's a real greatest? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, about uh, the things that they value and treasure. Yeah. It's true. Mm -hmm. Very true. And, Brother Given, at the same time, you'll, you will be expending all your energy for nothing if you're caught in this institutional thing. I mean, it'll sound <laughs> great and sound like, oh, I'm going to give to the poor, which is. Completely fine, but what about those that are poor in spirit? How are you going to give to them? Yeah, that's right. And, uh, but it just, uh, I, I've seen it just like everyone, I mean, it seems noble and good, and it is, but there's other loftier things that you could be expending your time. Amen. That will, re that will redoubt to God's glory Amen. and it will in the end, give you glory on the other side. That's yeah. right. Amen. Things that last. Exactly. Mm -hmm. All right, our, our text tonight is uh, sixth chapter, verses 21 and 22. But that ye also may know my affairs and how I do. Tychicus, a beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord, shall make known to you all things, whom I have sent unto you for the same purpose, that ye might know our affairs and that he might comfort your hearts. My, what a what a heart he had for those brethren, huh? Yeah. Now it is important to pick up on the spiritual tone of this letter. Mm -hmm. There's a there's like a high tune with high notes in the kingdom of God that you have to pick up on when you read these marvelous texts. Now in his letter he deals with some difficulties that in if Ephesus let him that stole steal no more. But he doesn't make that the theme of the epistle, the anti stealing epistle. Yeah. He doesn't he doesn't do that. There's a higher tone, see, than that. He tells them not to be unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is, and he does but he doesn't like make that the theme of the mm -hmm. of the epistle. He prays for the opening of their eyes, but he doesn't even make that the theme of the epistle. The general tone of the letter is upward. Wherever, whatever you're talking about, it's, it leaves you looking up and going up. It's an attitude that's developed that is expanding and enlarging. This all indicates that the Ephesians were a holy body of people 
that the apostle could do some building work with. <laughs> this is construction work he's doing with the church there, see, because it was able to do this. Now, some, some of the Corinthians couldn't do construction work. He had to do a bunch of repair work. He had to do a bunch of repair work. Galatians was the same thing. There was very little really constructive. It was repair work and getting back on the foundation and things like this. See, the Ephesians, they, you could do some uh, construction work with them. He's establishing and solidifying them, in other words. See, because the spiritual people are more versatile. Aha. You get a spiritual people, now you can, you can work with them. Remember, they're more versatile. More prone to think. Now, in the six chapters of this epistle, he has delivered a remarkable scope of truth. And I thought it well just to kind of summarize briefly. He introduced them to the preparatory work of God that God had done. Redeeming them, providing spiritual blessings for them, choosing them, predestinating them. See, it's all as things God did. He told them what is providing salvation. Elaborated on redemption through his blood, forgiveness of sins, abounding grace, God's purpose revealed. He identified the experience of salvation that involved trusting, believing, sealed, receiving the earnest of your inheritance. He said, well, some further things required. Once you're in, some further things required. The opening of the eyes of your understanding to see the, perceive the hope, the riches of his glory, the greatness of his power toward us. I'm showing you the scope of the truth. What a marvelous thing. You could write a whole book on any one of these. He told them what took place in Christ when they were saved. He identified it. You were quickened with Christ. You were saved by grace. You are raised up to sit with Christ. You are created in Christ. Made nigh to God. Reconciled to God. Built upon the foundation for a habitation of God. See, the, he told them what happened when they were saved. He, he opened up the purpose of God in the third chapter. He said the divine objectives for the church. He told them. To, Keep the unity of the Spirit, perfect and edify the saints, be no more children, grow up into Christ, the body edifying itself, putting off the old man, putting on the new man, see? Mm -hmm. It's a lot of things, now I'm showing you there. A lot of things. He told them things to avoid, don't lie, don't give place to the devil, don't steal, don't use corrupt communication, don't grieve the Spirit, put away bitterness and clamor, so forth, see? See how thorough he is? Mm -hmm. He summarized following God and walking with Christ and putting on the whole armor of God. See, that's all covered in these six, yeah. hey. six chapters. You think, well, that's enough now to consider now. <coughs> I don't know, that's not enough to consider now. Now Paul adds an also. Yeah. Amen. Now he adds also. <laughs> After all this, which leaves you almost boggling the mind, he says also. Now what he's going to tell us to do doesn't take away one whit from any of these things that he said. Uh -huh. In fact, you've got to grasp the things that he said to pay attention to what he's say, going to say yeah. now. Right. But also, confirms the remarkable capacity of the new creation. Mm -hmm. Amen. I'll tell you, some people have little minds and they live little lives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They just, they're living like this in a periphery about this big when you got this great big open field of salvation. They just concentrate on one, one, one aspect of life consumes their entire person. Yeah. That's all they talk about. It's all to think about. All of their thinking centers around that. That's the only time they get excited is if that part of their life is touched. That's the only time they get depressed if that part of their life is touched. See, now I'm calling it to a higher way of looking at things. These are the highest things you can think about that I just mentioned, nine of them. Those are the highest things you can think about. Yes. And yet you've got to think about something else. Also, that you may know, oh, you're going to have to think about this, that you may know my affairs. You mean I've got to think about what Paul's, yeah. Yes, that you may know my affairs, what I'm doing. Other versions say instead of affairs, circumstances. You may know my circumstances. Or may know 
how I am or how the things are that concern me. Knowing the fears of most professing Christians would not be challenging. <laughs> I know a lot of Christians, if they were to tell you their affairs, you just say, well, so what? You know, <laughs> Big deal. You mean that's what's going on in your life? Your car's having trouble? You're having trouble with your car? That's it? Believe me when I tell you, brethren, that knowing the affairs of most people wouldn't be challenging at all. But when you know the affairs of Paul, uh -huh. oh, that's another, <laughs> that's another matter. Many people are living little lives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They are. I know there's nothing you and I can do to change it, but we can, we can say there's more, there's more, there's more. You got to lift your eyes up and not be looking down toward mm -hmm. you and just yourself, because the circumstances of Paul involved more than him, Amen. as you will see. Since he was in prison at the time he's writing this, Paul knew that they'd want to know how he was doing. He'd spent three years there, you know. Once, when writing Timothy, he asked. Timothy to come and he said and bring that cloak I left at Tharkippus yeah. Amen. it's uh he didn't say this but it's kind of cold in this dungeon I'm in I could do with a little warmth bring that she has some things that concerned her yeah. bring that cloak and oh by the way, I haven't been able to do as much writing as they want bring those parchments yeah. I got a lot of work I got to do Bring those parchments. See, when he talked about himself, you see, mm -hmm. it was a different kind of circumstance than most people. And pray that I get a good lawyer. Well, one time he did tell him to bring Zenos the lawyer. Yeah. He, did, he did say that one time. Well, again, you know, that is a good thought, though. Uh, now, Paul, he's up here because he was so involved in the kingdom. When you know his situation is yeah. up here, but all those who are living for the Lord, who are really engaged in the faith, we all do have a situation. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know, that's and right. the, 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 the know each other situation. That's right. You know, that's what you were talking about earlier in the in the in the early part of the introduction. We we get to know in the modern church you can't do this, yeah. but you here we and in a situation like this, the body of Christ, you can get to know each person's situation. That's right. They're yeah. they're spiritual and and faith lived situation. Mm -hmm. yes. Amen. See, we've got brethren among us that. I can tell you, most churches, you'd never hear anybody pray for young people that weren't able to get there. Yeah, yeah. In fact, I never, I never have heard anybody. Yeah. I never have heard anybody make a request like that in all my 77 yeah. years. I never have heard anybody make a request like that except here. Yeah. Okay. Most people never, never enters their mind mm -hmm. that the little ones could have some advantage to the assembly because they're always shuttled off yeah, to the nursery right, or someplace right. like this. Yeah. See. Babylon's created an environment where there, it, it's it, it just the fact that it's there minimizes everyone's participation. That's right. Well, now if you've got a bunch of people who aren't participating, what do their lives amount to? Yeah. There's nothing to talk about about what they're yeah, doing. And your life is neutral, neutralized. That's right. There's a sense in which every man must bear his own burden. That is true. There's a sense in which that's true. Galatians 6 says that, but it says we should bear one another's burdens at first. Now, bearing your own burden, there are things that you've got that you just got to put on, get your shoulder under it yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's other things where the brethren have to mm -hmm. get up under there with you. Yeah, yeah Brother Judah. Recognizing the brethren's situation is part of loving the brethren and laying your life down for the yeah, brethren. That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. John speaks about in First John three. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Before we move off this matter of the little ones, see that even applies there. Mm -hmm. We know their situation. That's right. This is something we're praying for things they can't do for themselves. Mm -hmm. When we bear our own burden, that means what you can do, yeah. you don't throw on somebody else That's to right. do for you. That's right. Mm -hmm. But because we're part of a body, mm -hmm. and because yeah. we all have things from time to time that are greater than mm -hmm. our own capacity, Amen. 
then that's when whenever the whole body works together. Amen. Mm -hmm. So that no no part mm -hmm. in particular Amen. is is um, overcome or overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because that affects the whole. Mm -hmm. You know, it, if we're ta we're talking like about Brother Antonio and Sister Sarah, they're members of the body. That's right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. They're members of the body. Mm -hmm. But this is body talk. What Sister June just said wouldn't there, people would not understand a word she no. just said. I know. Like what are you talking about? Yeah. But, but see, what, what, this is this is how the body really is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But see, Babylon's not like this. This now, isn't see, the way that it happens there. Amen. This is all in the context of the people of God know God. They know what God can do. Yeah. They know how God is disposed to work. Uh, some people don't believe that God can impose his will on somebody. Some people don't believe that God can do this. But we got some cases we're praying about. We're asking God to impose his will on the situation. Uh -huh. yeah. To make it happen yeah. regardless what the parents want mm -hmm. or parent wants. Yeah, that's right. That's what we're praying. See, if you don't know God properly... Mm -hmm. You won't be able to throw yourself into these prayers because you'll be thinking, well, it's gone a little too far now. What are we going to be able to do? Yeah. Regard to the little ones being in the meetings, of course, if they don't meet, even if they're there, if they don't meet in the same part of the building, mm -hmm. the adults don't know what's being taught. Yeah. That's right. And also, if the little ones are not in the presence of the adults, they don't hear the adults speak. But if the adults don't speak... That's right. Even say, if they are there, they yeah, don't know what they think. Right. They don't know exactly. they know anything. Exactly. They don't hear anything. Exactly. Except maybe from one or two people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Raise them up in the nurture and the admonition yeah. of the Lord. Yeah. See, well, they don't understand. Sometimes these little ones understand more than you think. Amen. Brother Isaac? Amen. I was teaching the uh, younger kids, the uh, elementary age from second to fifth grade. Honestly, I love teaching that group because they understand what I'm trying to say but I was very concerned because I was doing communion for them and I just asked them a question about um, why this was important and they they gave me the response and they knew why it was important yeah, but then when I asked so if we were remembering Jesus' death why did he have to die Crickets all the way through. I mean, why, why they just gave me? Well, because he loved us. He liked it, which is all true. But but why did he die? And it was just arresting to say, oh my goodness, these kids, I, they had no clue. And uh, going on with what you said, I mean, they're not part of the assembly. They don't know. I mean, they know God loves them, but that's about the extent. They don't know the manner. Of God's love. Yes, you know, what manner of love? Amen. Amen. The manner of Amen. God's love. Like, oh, God loves me so much. Like, and I, to to my, um, when I'm there, I try to dispel that myth as much as I can. But it's just that I just asked the question. I just kept on probing and probing and probing and just to say, this is why he died. And I, I just like they heard it for the first time. Kids Wonderful. here, mm -hmm. are, um, the younger generation here, they have an advantage of it's being proclaimed constantly That's right. yeah. and it's getting in. These kids, they're so segregated from the, um, and I only get them once a month, they're so segregated from the nucleus that they're subjected to the whims of whoever's teaching. Mm -hmm. And it's just disconcerting. I'm just like, okay, we're raising up this generation? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Amen. You know, even the world knows this, mm -hmm. that you have to spend time with someone that you're going to teach. Mm -hmm. Why do you yeah, think sure do. that children have to go to school five days a week mm -hmm. and they keep them for about eight hours away from home? Why is that? About a 40-hour week for the kids. Mm -hmm. Because they know that whoever spends the time with them has the influence. That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. As you may know my affairs, he wasn't ashamed of what he was doing, see? <laughs> and how I do, in other words, what I'm doing. Now, you may be assured Paul was just not sleeping his life away. He's in prison here. He wasn't just 
yeah. sleeping his life away. He was a faithful and productive servant. He was always praying for the churches. See, the care that came on him came on him in the prison That's right. as well as in the ship uh -huh. or on a foot. Care that comes on him. He was sending out special messengers from the prison. He sent out Tychicus. He sent out Timothy. He sent Onesimus. He sent Epaphroditus from prison. Mm -hmm. He dispatched him. Yeah. That's it. So you'll know what I'm doing. Now Paul sends Tychicus to update the Ephesians concerning his activities at the time. Now it's noteworthy that the true servant of God will not be found idle. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. I can't tell you how I thoroughly despise people who quit. I have a very difficult time with preachers that retire and stop. I don't understand it. I don't want to understand it. There's nothing like this in the scriptures. Amen. Either the old or the new. Amen. Didn't happen. So he'll be about the king's business no matter where he is. It's just about he's going to relay what, what kind of work he's doing for the king at the present time. Brother Paul knew the way the body works. Mm -hmm. that if good. he were to alert the other brethren to these yeah. things that he was involved yeah. in, that, that would provoke them to become part of that work. Amen. Also. Now, when pray, you said pray for us, that yeah. pray for, that meant something. Now, see, yeah. Take it, guess a beloved brother. This is Paul talking now. Tychicus, uh, did you ever hear a preacher talk about a beloved brother of an, of an underling? I mean, did you ever? Have you ever heard a minister from a large congregation speak about such an unknown as a beloved brother? Paul did. Beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord. See, being a, a faithful member of the body of Christ, Paul would often refer to the saints by name. Mm -hmm. yeah. let, me, let me give you a few of these names. Tychicus, Epaphroditus, Timothy, Titus, Trophimus, Luke, Phoebe, Priscilla, and Aquila, Eponidas, Mary, Andronicus, and Junia, Amplius, Urbane, Stachys, Apelles, Aristobulus, Herodian, Narcissus, Tryphena and Tryphosa, Persis, Rufus, Asyntychus, Hermas, Petrobus, Philologus and Junia, Nereus, Nereus, Olympus, Lucius, Jason, Sopater, Tertius, Ga Gaius, Erastus, Ephus, Ep Ep Epaphras, Onesimus, Marcus, Aristarchus, Onesiphorus, Aphia, and Archippus, to name a few. See, most people would say, these are the saints I know, Peter, John, Matthew. <laughs> they named the other apostles. He doesn't name one apostle. Yeah, yeah. Elsewhere he did, but mm -hmm. when he talking to the church, Amen. he doesn't speak of like a hierarchy up here. Mm -hmm. yeah. He speaks as a member himself right. of the body. Amen. You notice they included men and women, mm -hmm. married and single, mm -hmm. slaves and free, and even a government official. Mm -hmm. yeah. No respecter of persons. Yeah. Amen. Tychicus, that's a unity. That's a unity of the faith that lived out there. Amen. See, There are some people across the world that know you by name and there's some people on the other side of town that don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Uh -huh. Oh yes, we've got people say, oh yeah, we, we know who, we now we got to see who that is. Mm -hmm. People on the other side of the world know you by name. Some church members just a stone's throw away have no idea mm -hmm. who you are. Why not? They're not engaged in as wide a range of work mm -hmm. as we are. Sister Melissa. That, that made me think about when we first came and first became associated here. It was just amazing to us that everybody didn't know all of you. 
<laughs> that we could come to this town and maybe say your name and everybody would, yeah, nobody, you know, and you're thinking, what is wrong with yeah. this picture? <laughs> We've had people from other countries come here and make the same observation. Yeah. Yeah. Tychicus, a beloved brother. Now, Tychicus is mentioned four times in Scripture. Isn't that something? Four times. He was among those who accompanied Paul to Asia. That's the first time we hear mention of him in Acts 20, verse 4. He was sent by Paul to Ephesus, bringing this very epistle that we've been studying. He was also sent to the church at Colossae and probably took the epistle there too. Paul considered him as one he could send to Titus. He told, uh, he told Titus, I, 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 I think I'll send uh, Tychicus to you. Kind of strengthen your strengthen your hand. Ticket gets to be good for you. I'll, I might send him to you. Well, you know this by experience. A certain brethren they they need, they do something for you. You don't have to denigrate anybody else, but that's just the way it is. A certain brethren that just they just especially minister to you. A beloved brother. That's not a term for every member of the body of Christ. The term beloved means esteemed and dear and favorite and worthy of love. It's a, it's a person who is elevated in some, in some way for his work's sake or whatever. It's not a term that denotes respect to persons. It's not that kind of term. He speaks of a love that's developed in a close friendship and relationship. They've been, they've been comrades, so to speak. It's been developed. There's a sense in which all the people of God are the beloved, are the beloved as compared to the rest of the world. Amen. See, all the brethren are beloved, not as compared to church one to church two. They're beloved as compared to the world. Yeah. But within the body of Christ, there are some people who, with whom you're familiar because you've labored with them. You, you both had your hand on the plow, and they're beloved for that, for that reason there. Yeah. They're beloved. But see, if you've got a church where people don't work together for the cause of the Lord, then you got a lot. You don't have many beloveds, yeah, right. <laughs> right? So here, the term is more focused, applying to one who's distinguished himself as a faithful servant of the Lord. That's what he says. Tychicus, a faithful minister in the Lord. He said the same thing of Tychicus in his letter to the Colossians. He said he's a faithful minister and fellow servant in the Lord. Another time, Paul referred to Epaphras the same way as a faithful minister of Christ. Now, how do you suppose Paul would refer to you? I Maybe mean, it's just something to something to muse in your mind. I think there's a, several of you. He would probably be prone to say faithful minister or faithful brother. Or he, you've distinguished yourself as one that's consistent and. Always, always, you, you could be. You know, people know where you're going to stand. Whatever the issue is, they know where you're going to end up. Faithful minister of the Lord. We have a number of people to speak publicly. All of them are faithful ministers in the Lord. See, they, you can always count on it. They're going to deliver some word that will edify, strengthen, build up. You know, Paul said that Jesus put him in the ministry because he counted him faithful. So that's a very important, very important thing in the kingdom of God, faithful. Yes, amen. People you can't count on, we're not in the business of condemning these kind of people. We're just saying that we can't call them faithful brethren. Mm -hmm. Can't count on them. They may be here, they may not. Mm -hmm. They may be involved, they may not. Mm -hmm. A minister is one who executes the commandment of another. Now, in our day, the word minister has been elevated to a certain uh, position mm -hmm. that deserves more honor. It's a leading official in the church. And a lot of these leading officials don't actually do much for the church. <laughs> but they're ministers. <coughs> and this, this was the case with Tychicus. He was... He was a faithful mm -hmm. minister. The people of God were profited Amen. by Tychicus. Yes, That's a faithful minister. See, a faithful minister will leave the people of God better than he found them. Yeah. 
He'll leave him more comforted than he found him. He'll leave him more mindful of God than he found him. See, not because they were bad, but because they haven't topped out. As long as you're in the world, you haven't topped out. So he's helping them. Yeah, I understand that the word faithful can be translated a number of ways. Some of the other versions say tested servant. <laughs> well, that's actually what faithful is. Faithful means, see, every child of God faces obstacles. Mm -hmm. They've got to press yeah. Yeah. forward. You don't, you don't just or grab or automatically go forward. Mm -hmm. And a faithful servant is one who's pressed through the obstacles. The, the hindrances hasn't stopped him. The, the heartbreak hasn't, hasn't slowed him down so he can't move forward. See, a lot of God's people have had broken hearts. So oh, they've had broken hearts. They've had things that they couldn't tell you how adversely it affected them, experiences. But they kept pressing forward even though hot tears were dropping on the ground. They kept going forward. They were faithful ministers. Some people have ministered to the people of God when they felt anything but good. They were a faithful. See, that faithfulness presumes some kind of opposition, some kind of hindrance, some kind of obstacle. Otherwise, faithful doesn't mean anything. See? That's right. Amen. See, there are people like John Mark that, as Paul said, left the work. Mm -hmm. He left the work. Yeah. We're getting ready to go into this territory. Had Mark left the work. Mm -hmm. Demas, he said, he's forsaken me, having loved more of the present world. See, they were at that point in time they did that, they were unfaithful. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's, really good. That's what I was about ready to mention. That's why Babylon is so it hurts people so much because it puts all the emphasis on this world and then when this world is coming apart underneath their feet well then it, they just crumble but see as believers we're faithful because of what we have to look forward up ahead not because of this yeah. world the world come, it is going to come apart Amen. so our joy is set up ahead see every assembly can be like a spiritual potluck mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where everyone who ministers can gather mm -hmm. things that will strengthen them for their, yes. for their ministry. A faithful minister, minister not only faces obstacles and hindrances, he has afforded opportunities to strengthen him. Mm -hmm. Like the disciples when Jesus was speaking, hey, that's where they were at. If Jesus went someplace, unless Jesus told them to go someplace else, yeah. that's where they were. Yes, amen. Amen. I'm saying that's what made them faithful ministers. Yes. Uh -huh. amen. See? This is the day when we could sure do with an increase of beloved and faithful ministers, isn't it? Amen. Amen. Now what about, well, Dickie, because he'll make known to you all things. He is... He's familiar with what I'm doing. Yeah. She'll make known all things. Well, he's not going to say that Paul was hungry on Thursday. He didn't have anything to eat on Thursday. And the temperature was unusually hot on Saturday. And he got beat on Monday. But that's not the sort of things he's talking about. All things. He's talking about all pertinent things, all things having to do with his ministry. Yeah, amen. Amen. Now, isn't that a commendable thing? Mm -hmm. He'll make known everything to you. Now, who would you, let's say tonight, this, that you had to make a choice to choose someone who could tell everybody else everything that was relevant about you. Who would you choose to tell? <laughs> yeah. You have to do some thinking, don't you? Paul just knew. Take it because he's the one. He can tell you everything. He'll tell you everything. 
he doesn't mean everything from A to Z. He's telling you everything is pertinent. Now, we see we've learned this in Genesis. This is how God tells. God reports the pertinent things, the incidental things he doesn't even talk about. So he wasn't going to report all the little incidentals. They made Paul eat corn mush, and he really needed some protein today. I mean, he, this isn't the kind of things that he reported. All things. I will tell you that when you come into Christ, all things mm -hmm. become new. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. And reporting all things is different when yes. you're doing the work of the Lord. May he elaborates a little bit on Tychicus. I have sent unto you for the same purpose that he might, that you might know my affairs and that he might comfort you. Now something of the... Uh, Nature of the work of the Lord is seen in this text. Paul affirms he sent Tychicus and that he did so for a specific purpose. Now this suggests that the servants of the Lord are not a group of freelancers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just to go in here, go in there, and doing my own thing. That's not how they operate. Now, I can understand you could carry this to an unwarranted extreme. I understand that. But the work of the Lord is actually driven by the knowledge of God and the purpose of God. And Paul sent Tychicus because he did have extraordinary knowledge of God and of the purpose of God. So he sent Tychicus with that in mind. Paul sent Timothy. There's another person he sent just the thought of Paul sending anybody is just a, a source of edification. Just stop and ponder it. He said to the Corinthians, I sent certain brethren. Like it, it was chosen out like, like the early church had choose seven men full of the Holy Spirit and power that we can appoint over this. See, they had... In, the, in God's kingdom, when somebody's sent or chosen, it... They have to meet certain requirements. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Tychicus, of course, meant these. Epaphroditus, Paul sent Epaphroditus to Philippi. He sent Onesimus to Philemon. You say, well, that's kind of authoritarian, isn't it? Well, yeah, it is kind of authoritarian, but Paul had a right to be an authoritarian. Mm -hmm. See, he knew. He knew where to dispatch people. There, mm -hmm. uh, there were some people he wouldn't have sent. He wouldn't have sent some people to mm -hmm. Ephesus. There are certain people he could send there. See, there, it was discreet, in other words. Mm -hmm. I've sent him now for the same purpose. Mm -hmm. He said to the Colossians, much the same thing, whom I sent of oh, seeking of Tychicus, whom I sent unto you for the same purpose, mm -hmm. that he might know, but there he says that he might know your estate mm -hmm. and comfort your heart. So it's see, Colossae was in a different condition than Ephesus. Mm -hmm. At Colossae, they were facing some philosophical teaching that was dangerous, and apparently they'd already kind of caved into it. Because if you be dead with Christ, why are ye subject to ordinances? So they'd already bought in. Mm -hmm to some of this, so he didn't send Tychicus to tell Colossians necessarily about his state. He wanted Tychicus to tell him of him about Colossians' state, mm -hmm. that he might know. Yeah. All right, now let's say that you, you'd heard about this church or that church, or maybe some of your relatives go to this church and that church, and you decide, we've got to send someone to find out, like, what's going on at that church? Who would you, who would you send? Mm -hmm. Who would you send to tell you the state? You gotta, you gotta have a handle on things to do something like that. Amen. Amen. Paul did. Paul had labored in Ephesus for three years, so he kind of knew their state. So he wanted them to know about his state, how he was doing. Because they were familiar with him, see. They would have a natural interest in him because he'd been there for three years. He'd never been to Colossae. So telling Colossians his state wouldn't mean to them what it meant to the Ephesians. Now, if Paul was imprisoned in Rome, and as, as I think he was, Ephesus was five, over 5,000 miles from Rome. <clears throat> All right, take a kiss. 
how are you going to get from Rome to Ephesus? I mean, in today's world, you'd have to ask that question. Uh-huh. Paul didn't seem concerned about that at all. He just, just sent him there. Why? Because he knew about a directing God yes, and a providing God and a leading God, just like Abraham sending his servant out, you remember, that God led him. Yeah. He knew God, God will lead him. Mm-hmm. He wasn't going to Ephesus to sightsee. Amen. He didn't go there for a vacation <laughs> or a casual observer. As I've said, it appears that brethren at Ephesus were more advanced. So Paul had probably talked to Tychicus about this, sent him there, and Tychicus just struck out. You see, when we come, now it had been some time since he was in Ephesus, since Paul was in Ephesus. But he's not thinking in context of time. That's not, that's not how he's thinking. In Christ, we we do we view things differently. We don't view things in the context of time, because time is actually the time for preparation for eternity. Mm-hmm. That when you're going, you got this in mind. I can tell you, that Paul's still preparing. Mm-hmm. He, he's still preparing to meet the Lord. He's still getting ready to meet the Lord. He's still faithfully carrying out his commission so the Lord will be well pleased with him. I think we could, there could be some improvement in this area. While thinking of people in context of the day of coming of the Lord, the day of judgment, and the ages to come. Now here he says something a little bit different. The first time he said that you might know my affairs. Mm-hmm. right? Now he says that you might know our affairs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Now we get a little body talk here, now a little body talk. Yeah. Our affairs. Mm-hmm. Or other versions say that you might know about us. Mm-hmm. Or that you might know how we. Paul's in prison, but there's still a we. Yeah. Still in us. It could have been someone in prison, but mm-hmm. I tend to think it's the people who visited. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. There were still people united with Paul even when he was in prison. Yeah. Yeah. That must have bolstered, that must have bolstered uh, Paul's heart. Our affairs, he considered what he was doing as something we were doing. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> they <Isn't> could. <that good? laughs> See, they joined in the work. I'm going to tell you what we're doing, what we're doing now. Mm-hmm. Tychicus is one of the ones with me. We're doing. The way he refers to the members of the family who are, who are with them working together. See, the work of the kingdom is a personal matter, mm-hmm. my affairs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's also a joint matter, yeah. our affairs. Amen. Amen. So you think to yourself, there are some people in the world who would like to know about our affairs. Uh-huh. There are some people in the world who would like to know how we're doing. We get requests from this sometimes. Yeah. How are you doing? We pray for you regularly. Mm-hmm. One group of brethren there set aside three days every once in a while and just pray for us here. Mm-hmm. So they want to, how, how are your affairs? Amen. So we sent them a couple of brethren. We found out about them. They found out about us. Yes. The word comfort, and that he might comfort your hearts. is mentioned 19 times, I believe, in Scripture in the epistles 19 times comfort comfort other versions say encourage you encourage your hearts comfort their hearts encourage and strengthen your hearts the word comfort is a very big word it's a large it's a, it's a gallon word it's not a tablespoon word some words are tablespoon words some are eighth of a teaspoon words Oh, they are. There's some words like that. You don't want those to be the hub of your yeah. hub of your doctrine. We get comfort, Scripture says in Romans 15, 4, from the Scriptures. So we do comfort of the Scriptures. Mm-hmm. The one who prophesies comforts us. 1 Corinthians 14, 3. God himself comforts us. Mm-hmm. 2 Corinthians 1, 3. Then there's the comfort of others, just a... 
Florida people, and it's a ministry of individuals like Tychicus and Comfort, I'm going to comfort you, and fellow workers. All right, why do saints require comfort, encouragement, bolstering them up, increasing their faith and boldness, consoling, consoling them? Why, why, why do they need that? Relief. Why do they need that? Support. Sucker. Why, why do they need that? Why do they need calmness? I think things kind of get... Well, there's a reason why. Don't they have enough resources? Do they... Hasn't God given them enough so they don't need this? He's blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Every one of them have access to God with confidence. Why do they need someone else to come in for, see, and, and co console them or comfort them or encourage them or lift them up? Why? Why is that necessary? They should have enough. They have enough supplies, don't they? Yeah. Spiritual life is not intended to be sustained by the individual himself. God doesn't even intend for yeah. spiritual life to be sustained that yeah. way. Mm -hmm. Why do you think Jesus gathered 12 disciples around him? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why did he just pick out one? Or why did he pick out any? He said he picked them out that they might be, quote, with him. Yeah. And that they might preach. Mm -hmm. There are some mitigating factors in life that are designed to uh, require sustenance from outside yourself. Think of it, there's the weight of mortality. Sometimes it almost gets the best of you, the weight of mortality. It's just that there's a part of you that's decaying and waxing old and getting ready to vanish away. There's a need to confess sin. Sometimes you go to sleep at night, you would to God. You hadn't have done some things you did. Mm -hmm. Other people might not call them sin, but that's not how you view it at all. Right. And it mm -hmm. discourages you that God couldn't count on you in that area. Mm -hmm. but you were kind of erratic. Mm -hmm. oh, you, but see that God has some comfort for people like that. Amen. And the recollection of failure. Sometimes your mind... Reaches back there and oh boy, cast you down. You did the. You know they're forgiven. You know they're under the blood. But just the fact that you did them. Mm -hmm. I was there. Mm -hmm. Paul said I was there, yeah. consenting to his death. Yeah. There was still a weight to him. Yeah, that's right. Years later, there's opposition and persecution. Some believers had to face his temptations and fears within, and fiery darts to the wicked one. These are the effects of having, there are effects of having a treasure in earthen vessel mm -hmm. that require comfort. Amen. You can say, well, everybody ought to be happy when they come here. Let's all just be happy. Well, now we'll tell you, we do prefer to be happy. <laughs> We'll just be right up front with you. We're not always happy. Yeah. Sometimes we need some oil. Yeah, amen. We need our heads anointed. Yeah. Have the refreshing oil of comfort poured upon us. Also, a need for sobriety. So yes, yeah. mm -hmm. you, you oh just yes, happy all the time, But you have to be serious about what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, there's feelings of inadequacy. If you haven't had any lately, by, by tomorrow you'll have some where you just sense you don't have what it takes to address this situation. You've got to get some more. Uh -huh. That's where comfort comes in, see, that's where comfort comes in. There's formidable challenges that can even make you despair of life. Uh -huh. Both I despaired of life. But then Titus came. Yeah. He comforted us. Amen. There's the impact of, of a great falling away that's taken place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the reality of Babylon the Great, and it has an impact mm -hmm. on the human spirit. Yeah. 
and you need comfort. Yeah. It depletes. It's like it takes so many of your spiritual resources to wrestle with this thing that you got. You've got to have a fresh supply. Yes. A Tychicus has to come along, Amen. or a Timothy. Sometimes there's the awareness so many false prophets have gone out into the world. Many false prophets. Now, some people just state that off just like a, many false prophets in the world. We shouldn't be surprised. So much. But the false prophets in the world are a weight yeah. uh -huh. to people that have received the love of the truth. For some, there's the burden of failing health. Yeah, they'll tell you it shouldn't affect the way it does, but mm -hmm. sometimes you've got to have some comfort. Some people have wayward family members. Yeah, they should be able to bear it philosophically, but they got to have some comfort. Mm -hmm. It's just a little bit too heavy yeah. to bear yourself. Some have lost loved ones that were very close to them. Left a gaping hole. Doesn't look like anyone's going to step up and fill it. See, make no mistake about this, brother. While we're in the world, there's an indispensable need for comfort. Mm -hmm. Amen. And God has arranged his body so some people excel in this ministry of comfort. And it's like a it's like a peace be still ministry. <laughs> Jesus works through them. It's Jesus doing the work. He works through the members. Works through the members of the body. And some of these members, they're comforters. That's what they are, they're comforters. Take a kiss with such a person. He didn't say, he'll try and comfort you. He said, he'll comfort you. Amen. He'll do it. Amen. I think I'll stop there. Any of you have something you'd like to add tonight? Yeah, yes. The, independent, in, the interdependence that the body has one on another and how Babylon doesn't have this nor really need it. It doesn't really need it, what it does. When I was uh, interning down in Amarillo, there's a very large church. Um, they had so many people coming through, they structured their services to where the first service would go out one door and the people coming in this, the, for the next service would come in a totally different door to where they wouldn't even interface one with another. Mm -hmm. But see, and that would seem reasonable, you know, if you had yeah. that many people you're trying to, work, that would seem, re but that's my point, it's unreasonable that that's you would yeah, structure right. things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To where there are members that don't have a dependence one on another. That's right. And, uh, yeah. When I look at Paul's ministry, you see this everywhere. Like when he went to Rome, yeah, that's he wanted right. to impart to them some spiritual gift, but not just so that he would give them advantages, so that they would give him that's an right. advantage. Amen. And he would ask for prayer yeah. for himself. And so there was that. Even someone at a high level as the apostle Amen. Paul was at, Amen. He required. This wasn't a luxury. Mm -hmm. He required. The ministry of the body to assist mm -hmm. him because that's the way the body functions. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yes, did you want? Yeah, it, we talk about Babylon a lot, but that's because there's a lot to be said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, this situation, Brother Ricky just got to <coughs> in that in that situation, the view of the people that orchestrate that kind of movement in the building. See that there's only necessary for you to have contact with one or a very few people. All you need is to see is to sit at the feet of the minister and the musicians and whoever. You know, you just count them on one hand and don't use all your fingers. There's no need for you to, to have any contact with the rest of the people. Because you're just the people and they're the ministers. Yeah. So all the people need the ministers, but they don't need each other. That's true. Yeah, yeah the, uh, even though this is common in the body, what we just talked about, mm -hmm. this is the common, it's the way God designed it. We're living in a time where this is a rarity. That's right. So this is a, and, and, and and we are privileged in, in, in that we we go to an assembly, we we fellowship in an assembly where this this is the common. This yeah. is what this is just what happens, and yet that 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 we would never take it for granted that that. And I know that we don't, but I'm saying for the children who've never been exposed to anything other than this, they think this is just. 
the way it is everywhere. This is not the way it is everywhere. I mean, that, that you, if you had something to say, you just had an insight. <laughs> there's, there's not a meeting we've ever had here that you couldn't express it. Mm -hmm. you, there was an opportunity made to, to, yeah. to say the things that you've seen, but this is very rare in the yeah. time we're living in. Yeah, that yeah. Even if you did express it, people would think you were an odd. Like, what do you... What do you this is not the way we do things here. Yeah. But see, that this is God's done this. And so it, it doesn't, you know, I was thinking uh, while you were speaking about uh, he, the, way, the way that Paul included the other members of the body. Mm -hmm. the, do you know our affairs? You know, you're, you're gracious in this area. He'll, he'll have contact with some people and he'll say, what's going on with us? You know, mm -hmm. I mean, and, and but see, technically, Brother Gibbon does most of, most of the <laughs> external labors here. We all know it. Uh, but but you're you're great. Why? Because you've already you said it yourself many times that you sit there and will say things and edify you oh, yes. in order that you can do this. Uh -huh. But see, this is this is unheard of to, to share. Some people think and the flesh things like this that if you let go of some of the authority or let go of some of the the, yeah. the, the then all of a sudden you've lost something. But see, we've seen it in Christ is different yeah. as you. Edify the members of the body. You're you gain. That's right. Amen. You don't lose anything. Right. Jay, you were going to say something. Amen. Two things. But, uh, in connection with what Brother Robert just mentioned, of course, many of us know that there are a lot of folks in this area who think that you don't let go of any authority here. I know it. But the one thing in your lesson that it, it's striking, I, I was thinking about how many times Peter was mentioned in Paul's letters. I think he was only mentioned two times. Yeah. That's right. Ticket gets us mentioned four times. The premier <laughs> apostles yeah, mentioned right. two times. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And then Good all these other people are mentioned half as much as the premier apostles. Yeah. 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 And many of them more. There were Amen. others who were mentioned. Yeah. The Paphos mm -hmm. was mentioned more than that's people. right. And Ticket gets us one. Maybe Trophimus. Now, now a word of uh, uh, exhortation. Mm -hmm. Now, as you. Every person who's a member of the body of Christ mm -hmm. is a member f for the purpose of expression. Yes, amen. Now, it's possible for someone to sit in this assembly and to think, well, I don't have anything to contribute. I'm just going to listen to what everybody else says. And we understand that there's a kind of a period of time when mm -hmm. that's how you think. But you can't stay there. Mm -hmm. You can stay there. See, there are some, some of you could be expressing yourself in various facets of the meeting. Mm -hmm. That we make allowance for brief presentation or whatever. Yes. And you should, you should take this seriously now. Yeah. Because your contribution will comfort us. Amen. It'll have to do with our affairs. Yes. See, I say that because... There's a tendency, I think, to let other people kind of take over and personally dr drop out of the process. I think that that's like a natural mm -hmm. tendency. But in Christ, you're a new creation. Now, you've been brought in to be a contributor. Mm -hmm. How much you contribute is only governed by how much you receive. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there's no limit to how much that, there's no limit to how much that can be. So I encourage you that if you feel you could do better at contributing, that start out, make a start at it. Mm -hmm. Break the ice, so to speak, and uh, it, you'll be blessed by it. Brother Judah. Yes, I, got, I got a mental picture when Brother Gip, <clears throat> Sister June was speaking about the people in the professed church depending on the minister and not on themselves and based this off of what you were saying earlier about the ministers being placed on a high pedestal where they can't interact and they're they're exalted higher than they should be mm -hmm. thought in the, in the professed church when the people are linked only to the ministers and not themselves it just goes straight up and instead of being interwoven and the, the church of Christ is all interwoven. It goes up to Christ, but then we're also interdependent on the other. So it flows this way, and it makes a stronger, it makes a stronger yeah. pattern. And if there's no weaving together, you don't go up very far. It isn't you could go, go up. 
Yes, Brother Tony. And what you were talking about just then, you know, fundamentally, we need to hear one another express their faith. Yeah, that's We're not mind readers. That's we right. need to hear you express your faith in the Lord in, that's some, right. in some way that that, that you yeah. choose to express. It. That's right. And just hearing that say yeah. has a sort of a yeah. you know how it ministers yeah. to you. Yes. Now you see uh, in an institutional setting, someone speaking would be confined to a sermon uh -huh. yeah. or a lesson. Yeah. See, but we're. And you can you can gravitate to to that kind of mentality, but yeah. we try and make provision for whatever you've seen. It may it may be to small, relatively small, but it may be also a very critical a diamond small too. Yeah. 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 Yes. These things are necessary on on quite a few levels. It it's necessary at some point. Now, first off. Every believer has seen something. Mm -hmm. and no matter how elementary it is, you have seen something mm -hmm. that the world can't see. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, so amen. You, you automatically have something that that uh, will. Well, it just it reinforces. It mm -hmm. may not may not be the sort of thing that advances out to where other people have to reach to get it, but it's something we've all taken yeah. hold of. And it, it reinforces and fortifies the whole. Mm -hmm. But it, it's important that we speak some things. Everybody doesn't have to be a blabbermouth. You don't need to just run your mouth to hear your own voice. <laughs> but you, if you never say anything, you'll be surprised at how many odd thoughts you'll entertain. Very good. Mm -hmm. You um, very good. You'll, Amen. You'll have the you'll have an opinion of yourself that you're that you're more accurate in your thinking than yeah. what perhaps you really are. Yeah, that's right. And many of us have learned this through experience. Mm -hmm. You say what you think is just crystal clear, and you find out from the conversation that uh, you weren't so crystal clear, yeah. <laughs> or perhaps that there was more to be considered than what you had just yeah. considered. Yes. Uh, whenever you made that statement, mm -hmm. and so you become a, uh, you become more equipped That's and right. more well-rounded, mm -hmm. and the body grows together into this unity of mind as well as spirit. Mm -hmm. That can't happen if if they, all the members don't participate. Yeah. Yeah. David once said, yeah. "I spake and was refreshed." Yeah. All right. If you have something and you don't speak it. There is someone that will speak to you. Uh -huh. And the, it's the devil. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh -huh. See, you spake and was refreshed. Mm -hmm. You like there's a certain kind of a freedom and exhilaration that comes when you speak what you know. Uh -huh. When it just that's the effect it has upon you. Well, if you take that effect away, uh -huh. there'll be other influences yeah. you know, mm -hmm. you wish you wouldn't have. <laughs> Yes. What Paul was saying to Philemon about the uh, communication of his faith yeah. becoming effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing. And the next verse it says, because the bowels of the saints are refreshed. Mm -hmm. Amen. Like, that, that's mm -hmm. how they were refreshed. That's it. And yeah. I've, uh, on comfort, some things that you said about it um, were very good. And comfort is much more than just saying they're there. Mm -hmm. it'll, it'll all be all right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The first noun definition of comfort is relief. Relief, it's, amen. It's to, it's to provide something needed. Yeah. Amen. It's, it's, it's to supply something that's lacking. Mm -hmm. So comfort has to do with adding to one another. Amen. It's a, it's a tra it's a, comfort is actually a, it's a form of, of a transaction. Mm -hmm. It's God gave something to me and I gave it to you. And you're comforted, you're helped. Yeah. You're advantaged uh, by that by that transmission of of faith, of grace, of mercy, and your your comfort. It's, it's not. I think that um, humanity, maybe society in general, has has robbed some of the meaning. You 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 refer to this of the word comfort. Comfort is not just about feeling better. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's about being advantaged. It's mm -hmm. about being added to. Amen. Yeah? See, the truth of the matter is that our, our resources, not, the, not God's resources, 
our resources are depleted mm -hmm. as we wrestle yeah, right. and run uh -huh. and seek yeah. and fight. Mm -hmm. It depletes our personal resources. Comfort replenishes yeah. replenishes yeah. them. Speaking there, he said relief. Yeah. Two two circumstances immediately uh, come to mind. One is like we've had several uh, like major disasters. Well, the people were comforted when people brought relief. In. That's right. Amen. And yeah. Even in a warfare, the you have you have soldiers that are being overwhelmed. Relief comes mm -hmm. whenever more more is sent so that they were relieved or comforted in their effort. So this is, yeah, that's that's good. I like that a lot. Amen. Mm -hmm. Brother Jeremy. Well, I, I was thinking of something about what Sister June just said. I was comforted by people helping us, but I was most comforted by when Brother Aaron came and picked us up to see his face coming oh, down yeah. the road. I tell you, I was glad when Titus came. I had, I had a, I had a joy in my heart that I'll never forget to see Brother Aaron come to get us. But um, also, I was thinking about through this whole thing that the Lord's um, doing something here, is making us rely on one another. Yeah. That there's going to be a work up ahead in glory that's going to be so large that we have to rely yeah. on one another. Amen. We cannot. Oh, it's a God work so big that we we're not going to be able to do it on our own. So he's preparing us now to rely on one another to to, to get the work done. Amen. Get the task of yesterday. <laughs> yes. Um, I was considering when you were talking about the um, the miles that, that Tychicus was going to have to travel and and um, Paul was con it was connected to the vine. And so <laughs> Christ has the same concern for his people or for the Ephesians as Paul did. Yeah. And so um, it's not that we're um, it's not that we don't have concern about the cost of some things or the, the miles traveled or that sort of thing. But but faith doesn't have to have the details in order to carry Amen. out what the Lord is sending them to do. Amen. Paul had he he made it to Rome. Christ told him he was going to go to Rome, and he made it to Rome. Christ made the provision for him to get there. So yep. he, he, he had this experience, if you will, and he, he knew that, that this comfort was needed for the Ephesians, and this report was needed um, for Tychicus to give the report to the Ephesians, and he knew that, that this is Christ's manner and, and that he would provide a way for Tychicus to get back to, to Ephesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. yes, I was thinking, too, about this, uh, the, these miles. Um, you know, they didn't have any form of communication like we do now. So, so Paul was, um, he was assured of this brother, that he was a faithful minister, that yeah. he was one he could send out. And also, Paul had, part he had been a partaker of this brother's fruit first. Yeah, amen. So, so surely, uh, to Kikius had um, comforted Paul. Mm -hmm. So he knew that he was well able to do this yeah, with the right. brethren there. And Paul knew what the brethren needed. So that was good, you know. He, like Sister Tasha said, he was connected, but he already knew the br the brethren there would need this mm -hmm. this brother for this. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to uh, make a comment on the speaking. Um, per my own personal experience, when I speak, then I hear these things myself, <laughs> and I'm increased. <laughs> uh -huh. and, and like if I have to prepare something, uh -huh. then I'm increased because I have to think about it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, it, it kind of forces you to think on, the, on yeah. these things. Now let me say, well, go ahead, brother. Well, no, you go no, ahead. No, no, you go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say about the speaking, through, by the mouth confession yeah. is made. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. Over and over and over. Yeah, I'm right. comforted when I hear these public confessions. Yeah, that's right. And in and, and, and the form of comments. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, and, say and, it, it mm -hmm. Now let me say before you, uh, these are things I think about. I think about a time when the knowledge of the Lord will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. Yeah. All right, now now we send two people. Uh -huh. What if we sent 50 people? Yeah. Uh -huh. What if a group like this invaded some, yeah. <laughs> invaded some country? Yeah. God, see, God can do this. Amen. Paul traveled with a group of people. I don't know how many it was, but it was several. Yeah. It was several. Just ponder the possibilities, brethren. Uh -huh. 
Find the possibilities of this united body yeah. sitting in the middle of Africa someplace and how we would approach the work of God. We'd feed one another, yeah. what bolster one another. Huh? Anyways, there's something to think about. I, I like to think about it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to give it a little quickly. Um, just on the expression of faith, I, I have found that not only um, that your mind is engaged, that your mind is engaged, but you can actively think on the things that you are talking about. Yeah, that's right. you're engaging, you're actually, that's right. actually vocalizing um, what what you've seen, or maybe you need a little more correction on it. But still, there's there's still growth in mm -hmm. speaking. That's so right. you may not have it all together, and so you just like, oh no, it's actually this way, and so. You're growing, and we're all growing. Amen. Together, instead of just passively listening. And yeah. the other thing is, um, it's during the prayer time, I'm just like um, overcome yeah. with joy of that, yeah, that, that, about the faith of some people who are who were thinking along the same lines, yeah. but they say it in such a um, more excellent way than I do. Yeah. And it's just like, ah, oh, now I can temper my speech. Just yeah, amen, amen. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, if you listen to prayers, you'll yeah. learn a lot. It's like a teaching session. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. There was there was a quote I picked up some time ago. This reminds me of at least to the second part. There were three parts of it. It says reading makes an informed man. Conversation makes a ready man. Writing makes an exact man. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That's yeah. very true. Yeah. <laughs> very true. Mm -hmm. Mr. Maddie. Yeah, um, as we had already said Paul is in prison at this time and a person with less zeal would have allowed that circumstance to cause yeah. him to draw back or to, right. not, to not press in and to uh, not continue the work but Paul knew that the work he was given to do was, was greater than himself uh -huh. it mm -hmm. didn't make any difference what circumstance he was in in the flesh the work was going to continue because it was a work that God yeah. was doing Amen. and so um even though Paul couldn't go, he was physically unable to go, he made sure that well, that brethren who were fit to carry the message were sent yeah. out. And Paul received something back from this. Paul, oh, yes. he needed to be um, encouraged just as much as uh, Paul had this care for the churches that he, yeah. he desired to encourage those that that he had ministered to, but Paul needed to be encouraged as well. And this yeah. was this was like his reward for having this care for the churches was that he was going to be, whenever he heard this good report um, that he, he spoke of several times in his epistles, but this is like the, the fruit of a good report. Mm -hmm. it can it can minister back to the one oh, who, yeah. who 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 labored in order for the the, the people to be strong well, you can get a report from Chloe yeah. at Corinth that cash you down then you get a report from Titus that Corinth had right of the ship so to speak yeah. so yeah Amen. All right, we'll have a closing word of prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we're grateful for the truth that's been made known tonight, for the profitable discussion that we've had. And we ask that you would give us grace to ponder these things and the possibilities that can come from them. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.